Hey guys, this is Joy back again with another video. And um, I just wanted to say thank you for liking and subscribing to my channel. Um, please be sure that you share the video and if, any, if it can help someone. So um, today's video, I wanted to talk about um, my experiences with narcissists. And the reason why I wanted to do this video is because um, I am becoming a counselor for narcissistic abuse. And um, I just wanted to let you guys know what my experience has been just so you don't think that I just came up with this idea to become a counselor with, for a narcissistic abuse. It's because I've actually experienced it. I've actually gone through the um, the emotions and um, yeah, it's pretty hurtful. But um, so um, my background and story is um, I'm actually from Delaware. I'm 27 years old. Um, and I currently live in California, Los Angeles in particular. Um, the reason why I moved to Los Angeles was because my brother ended up getting murdered, unfortunately. This was back in 2006. Um, and uh, from there, I ended up moving with my dad to Rockford, Illinois. He literally, we drove from Delaware all the way to Rockford. And that was like a day in a couple of hours. It was a real long trip. I've never did that in my life. That was crazy. But I remember I, I went to spend some time with my dad. And it was cool and all. But I just remembered how boring Rockford was. It wasn't a lot going on. It, like Rockford, it's kind of like the suburb, like country. It wasn't really nothing going on. I mean, Chicago might have been better. But my dad lived, like Rockford is nowhere near Chicago. So... <laughs> I mean, it's probably like 90 minutes away or so, and I'm just kind of like, uh, whatever. So, um, I remembered I had went to visit my aunt in California after my brother got murdered. And, uh, I remembered how nice it was, and I was like, wow, the weather is great, the food is good. I mean, the people were kind of like, uh, whatever, but, um, yeah, I was just kind of like, yeah, it was cool. And so my dad ended up telling me, he said, either you're going to live with me in Rockford or you're going to live in, um, California with your aunt. And I thought, well... California like you know so um I ended up moving to California my mom wasn't so happy about it because she wanted me to be with her but I, I didn't really think that was a good idea and um I actually think my uh, my mom may have been a narcissist but that will be in another video but um so yeah I ended up moving with my aunt um I lived with her for five years and it was kind of an up and down situation um I didn't really know that she was a narcissist it was kind of covert um, a lot of narcissists are pretty covert. The overt ones, I mean, you'll know. Like, just how the way that they talk to you, how they treat you, and stuff like that. But the covert ones, are, I think, are the most dangerous because they're not, it's not out there. Like, it's, like, so, like, subtle, and, you, like, they kind of wear these masks, and they try to pretend like they're nice, and, like, they love you, and they really don't. They actually hate you, and um, they're trying to destroy you. And they're just there to watch. So with my aunt, um, it was cool in the beginning. Um, I lived with her. I remember the first year was really nice. I was so spoiled. I got literally anything and everything that I wanted. Um, I would. I remember I went to Disneyland. I remember I would go to like um, like musical theaters with her and concerts and um, go to her with, to work sometimes, just kind of like being a, a kid all over again, you know, I got so close to her, because I remember at first, you know, I was just, I was new, fresh out of Delaware, and, um, yeah, I was, excuse me, I was still getting comfortable living with her, and she has a husband, she has two older sons, and I remember at the time, um, her youngest son lived with her, and then her older son, um, he lived on his own, but I think he lives with her currently, and I think her, her younger son lives with his girlfriend now, but, um, and again, this isn't a bashing video, this is just my experience, what happened, so, I remember as I started living with her, you know, I was going to college, um, I went for music production, I went to Fullerton College, I got my certificate, I was really happy about that, but I was trying to figure out a way that I can make money and be able to live independent. And I don't think she was happy with that. And a lot of narcissists, they don't like to lose their their control. Um, they want you're basically a supply to them, um, something that they can use and abuse and um, just control um, at any moment's notice. And whether they get positive attention or negative attention, it doesn't matter as long as they get some sort of reaction or attention from you. And um, 
I just kind of remembered like slowly but surely like she would kind of put me down like anything and everything that I tried to do was never right and I felt like she was always competing with me and like comparing herself to me and um it was just really weird because I'm like you're my aunt like why would you compare yourself to your niece like that doesn't make any sense and so but I didn't realize that until after the fact that all, all the things that was happening I didn't realize that she was a narcissist but I, what the th some of the things that was kind of like unusual or just kind of weird to me was I remember she asked me to like wash the dishes which I had no problem with of course if I'm living with you yes I want to help you out I want to do anything and everything that I can you know so she would ask me to do the dishes and I remember sometimes she would be like oh it's not clean enough or you know just like criticizing it like not even appreciating the fact that I did do the dishes like when her son could have done it and he saw the dirty dish and just left it there you know and she told me to do it so I was like okay whatever and then uh, I remember like mopping the floor and stuff you know I would kind of I went out of my way to mop the floor take the trash out and stuff I remember she looked at the floor and be like oh uh, it's still kind of dirty you sure you mopped it you know like kind of questioned me like she saw me mop it but then would still ask me that and I was like yeah so that that was weird and then uh, I remember sometimes she would like um, kind of compare me to her her son sometimes like it was just really strange like just and then um also because I remember like she was going she had something going on with her neck or something I guess it was I guess as you age it kind of sags a little bit and she would always be like oh yours doesn't sag but mine does and just basically trying to say like I was better than her or she was trying to like be better than me and I, I remember I told her, I was like, you shouldn't compare yourself to me, like, I'm your niece, like, there's no need to do that, you know, but she insisted on doing that, and I remember, like, she would get jealous, like, if her husband would be, um, kind of, like, talking to me or whatever, and then she would kind of look at him, like, oh, like, look at me, talk to me, and I'm just like, what is going on, it was just, it was crazy, like, and I had been going through this, I'd say, the first year was good, but it, I want to say, be between maybe like two to three years like off and on because I finally moved out but I was still in contact with her so um what made me want to move out well the reason why I originally moved out was because I was kind of getting tired of like her just like trying to be all in my business and really trying to dictate like what I do with my life because I feel like you know I'm not a child like I'm um a young adult like living my life and um, you know, in my mind, I feel like if I didn't ask you for your advice or help, I, I feel like you shouldn't put your opinion out there for me to hear because I didn't ask. But I'll listen to you if you have something to say, but I'm not going to do it if I don't feel that it's right. And I remember I was telling her, like, you know, I'm getting into music production and, you know, just kind of taking my own path because she wanted me to work a nine to five, be in the corporate office which is nothing wrong with that but that's just not what I want to do with my life and because I remember she was just not happy like with her job and just the things that she was doing the people that she worked with she was just miserable like this is a daily basis and I would be there listening to all of her stuff her talk and I mean I'm just there listening and I'm like okay cool like well you should do something to change but she never wanted to change anything never and my mind, I'm like, that doesn't make any sense because it's like you're complaining about it, thinking that that's going to help ch solve a problem. But it's like you haven't done anything to change that. So in my mind, I just felt like that that's abuse to me because you're not doing anything about it. You're just talking, but that's not any action, <laughs> you know. So um, but I would constantly have to go through that. And that was so draining because. I mean, if somebody's like in a negative um, uh, mentality or mindset and then they, they put all that on you, like that's going to bring you down. That's going to mess up your day. And so that's really why I wanted to get away from her because of that. And then just anything that I wanted to do with my life that wasn't quote unquote, I guess, um, the status quo, she was just against it. She would pretend like she wanted for me to do that. But really, she was no, she wasn't having it, you know. And, um, so, you know, thankfully I was able to move out on my own. I had some roommates, which those roommates was, oh my God, I, ugh, I hated them. <laughs> but I, I was happy to get away from my aunt because it was just, 
stressful living with her like I really literally like went out of my way to avoid her at like at all costs you know but um so yeah I still kind of like stayed around and she was actually paying my phone bill and um you know she was just kind of doing me a favor because you know I was still kind of young still like learning things about life and you know and um you know finally I decided she, like she kind of used that against me in the end she was like oh well, I'm paying your phone bill and this and this and that and I finally cut it off I'm like okay I'm getting a new phone and I know she's probably watching and any other narcissist that I used to talk to I know they're probably watching but I'm just being honest <laughs> so um so yeah that was that and then so um how I came to not talking to her anymore was um just like so there was two instances. I remember it was her birthday, and I think this was almost the beginning of the new year for 2015, so I think it was like late 2014. I remember she had a birthday dinner, and her son invited me to go, and it was cool, and at this, this time, I actually had my own apartment, and even when I had my own apartment, I remember when she came over to visit me, I could tell like she wasn't really happy. I could see that she was kind of jealous because she wanted me to end up moving back in with her so she could control me and abuse me again because that's what narcissists need. They need their supply. They need to abuse you and use you. They get off on that. They get off on your reactions. And this may be a long video. I'm hoping it'll only be like 15, 20 minutes, but yeah. <laughs> So, um, yeah, I, I just remembered, um, at the dinner, like, how she was comparing me to her son, because her son has his own place, and he lives with his girlfriend, and he's actually really cool, I don't think that he knows that she's a narcissist, or maybe he does, and just doesn't want to say anything, because that's his mom, but, I mean, my thing is, like, I, I don't, I mean, I never felt like she really loved me, I felt like she just used me as a source of supply, and to me, that's pretty hurtful, because, I was 17, I was still kind of vulnerable, and I was expecting her to be there for me, expecting her to listen and understand what I was going through, especially the, the traumatic situation of my brother being murdered, but she didn't care, the only thing she cared about was controlling someone and using them and abusing them. So, and um, I felt bad for her husband too, because I mean, he's just, he takes that. They've been together for like 30 something years. So I just, I feel bad. And for her son too. It's, it's really a sad situation. But, um, so yeah, I remember at the, the birthday dinner, um, you know, she was comparing me to her son. She was like, oh, look at his muscles. Cause you know, I work out sometimes, you know, just saying, but <laughs> I work out, and I'm, her son's muscle, like, he is, like, almost looks like a bodybuilder, and his muscles is, like, literally, like, up to here, and she was like, oh, like, look at, uh, so-and-so's uh, muscles or whatever, and I was like, okay, like, why are you comparing him to me? Like, I'm, I'm a girl, and he's a guy, like, of course his muscles are going to be bigger than mine, and then I remember she said something about, um, what was it? She said... Oh, what was it? she was just like saying something she was kind of like picking on everybody at the table and then everything was all about her she was like I think she was tipsy but this is how she normally is she was like this, she was like today is all about me all about me you know like all the attention was on her and then it, it was just she was just asking me she was like oh so are you still because I'm a pescatarian slash vegetarian she's like oh are you still a vegetarian she's like what do you eat and I was like I eat fruits and veggies she was like well do you even know like what this certain veggie is or something like that just really like criticizing me and trying to like make fun and everybody like kind of looking at me like because everybody else at the table they all ate meat and I'm not saying that it's something's wrong with you if you don't eat meat it's just I don't like I, that's just my personal thing you know and I'm not bashing anybody for doing anything like everybody has the free will to do whatever but I just kind of felt like it was just kind of like one of those things where she just invited me because she wanted to pick on me you know and this is my aunt this is my blood aunt you know so um I remember at the end of that night um I was hugging everybody and then I remember I hugged her son and I remember looking into her eyes, and I saw, like, a demon. Like, it was so evil. Like, I just couldn't believe what I saw. And then I remember the next time I seen her, 
that's when I was done because she really showed me who she was. She was putting me down. Every literally anything and everything that I said was it was not good enough. She was just complaining and just saying like she wanted me to move back with her and she just was not happy with, with the progress that I was making once I ended up like, moving on my own. And the only reason why I'm doing so well is because I believe in God. I know that God has me has my back and that he loves me and that he wants to see me do great. He wants me to, to live my he wants to use me for a good a good thing. Like what I'm doing now is becoming a narcissistic abuse counselor. This is how God is using me in my life, you know, in a good way, not how narcissists use you and abuse you. But anyway, so that was my experience with my aunt. Now with the two guys that I dated, it was kind of the same situation, but it was just dating in relationships, but the same type of abuse. Like the first person that I dated, it was kind of like off and on for like four years. And then the second person wasn't that long. It was kind of like for four months or so. So luckily I had kind of saw the red flags, but I was still kind of like, um, I didn't want to let it go because I really cared about that person. But with the first guy, I think, I think it lasted so long because I was like kind of doubting myself about it. I was like, well, I mean, why is this? I, I didn't really think much of it. I guess I was just kind of used to it because, and I'll make a video about this. Um, you know, when you maybe... I think I might have been abused when I was a kid or I might have been put down um, as a kid or I made, I was probably made to feel like I wasn't good enough as a kid from my parents and I don't think they did it on purpose. I Like I said, I've had this discussion with my dad and my mom and they have, I told them how I felt and um, I have forgiven them and I've forgiven myself and I let it go but I think that those things that happened to me when I was a child it still kind of like came over um, it never left me, you know, it was still there. And um, the reason why I allowed somebody to put me down and to be mean to me, and I thought that that was normal, and um, yes, yeah, because of childhood. But anyway, so these guys that I was dating was just, you know, but they, they were so good at what they did. They put on a mask, they pretended like they really liked me, and that they were, um, that we had common interests. But the thing is, they do that to suck you into the relationship to um, get you so they can abuse you. And um, it, w it was very, very painful with those two guys because the second guy, I was ups I was more hurt because I actually let that person into my space. Um, I let him into my apartment and he was actually living with me. And I'm not, I'm not, again, I'm not saying who this person is. I I'm not putting anybody's names out there. But um, he lived with me, and I told him a lot of things about me. And um, for him to do what he did was very, very hurtful. But I was, like I said, with these situations, like I didn't want to like tell this story of mine because I was so ashamed that people would look at me differently or judge me like, oh, how could she let somebody do that? But at the end of the day, I'm just like, this is not even about me anymore. This is more about helping those that have been abused or that were even thinking of committing suicide that was just depressed, that didn't feel like nobody was there for them, felt alone, you know what I mean? And, um, yeah, just, it was pretty, it's pretty, pretty hurtful, um, dealing with narcissists. And then I had a friend, I don't really know, she, she could have been like a sociopath slash narcissist. And again, I will go over more videos about, um, exactly like defining what narcissist is a sociopath, a psychopath, and you know, explaining the difference, whatever. But I just want to tell you my experience. But, um, yeah, with the friend, she pretended it's kind of the same thing, pretending that she was, I mean, because I thought she was a friend, but I felt like because she was actually from Delaware too, but I felt like maybe she was, comp she was comparing her life to mine's and she got her self-esteem on off of how good or bad I was doing and she wanted to bring me down to her level she was miserable with her life and she wants somebody else to feel her misery she does she probably feels that I mean cuz I'm not I know I may seem like I'm the happiest person but sometimes I have my down days like sometimes everything isn't great but I still I put on a smile and I do what I have to do you know but I feel like some people don't even want you to do that. And they want you to just be miserable like them. And I'm just not going to be that person, you know. Because at the end of the day, we only get one life and this is it. Um, there's no 
rehearsal. This is your life. You have to live it, you know. But I, I just felt like she was just competing and comparing her life with me, pretending that she liked me. And it was just, it was a sad thing. And she said some really hurtful things. And, um, yeah, I just, I couldn't believe that somebody would do that to me. But again, um, that's what it is when it's um, with narcissists. But that's my video. I don't want it to be too long. But um, yeah, thank you guys for listening and watching this video. If you have any questions or concerns, um, please be sure that you ask me, inbox me. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll have information about my um, website up very soon. Um, yeah, I love you guys so much. Um, and if you've been through narcissistic abuse, don't feel ashamed. Just, I'm here for you guys. If you want any, if you need someone to talk to, um, I'll have that information up for you. So, cause I'll be having my, um, my website up. So, and I'll be doing sessions. So if you just want to vent, if you want to know why some, why they did something or what does it mean, contact me. I've been studying this for a while. I've been through it. Um, yeah, I'm here for you guys. I love you so much. Please be sure that you like and subscribe. See you guys. Bye.